Hi everyone, welcome to episode two of Learn to Play Shogi. So I've got the uh, board set up uh, just the way I had it in the previous uh, lesson with the kings and the pawns. And once again, I recommend watching this video in on a big screen in high resolution, uh, just so you can focus in on the characters and learn to easily recognize them. So uh, hopefully you still remember the kings and the pawns. Uh, what I'm going to introduce today are the two generals. The, uh, the, king, the king has a, a gold general and a silver general. And uh, well, we'll start with the gold generals. The gold generals sit on either side of the king, keeping them company on the back ranks at the beginning of the game. And a lot of times uh, the generals will accompany the king uh, for a while uh, during the game to keep the king safe because uh, when your opponent has the ability to drop pieces and uh, it needs some uh, close-in fighters to, uh, to help defend. Um, so let's compare these pieces. If we look at, um, say, the king and compare them to the gold, the, um, the gold general is just slightly smaller than the king. If we compare that to a pawn, here you can see the three of them. Uh, so the pawn is the smallest of the pieces, the gold general is intermediate in size, and the king is the largest. Um, and then let's look at the kanji characters on that piece. Uh, the top kanji character says gold, and the bottom character says general. So it's read uh, uh, kinsho. So kinsho and osho. Um, and notice that actually the generals, uh, the, the kanji for general changed slightly from this, this piece to this piece. This is actually a slightly older and more ornate uh, kanji. This is the, the modern uh, version of that kanji. The kanji has gone through a couple of uh, episodes of streamlining, I guess, and, and this is one of them. So this is the more modern uh, kanji for general. And then the kanji on top, on top is gold. It's um, maybe the second most recognizable piece on the board. Like I said, the, the uh, kanji for king is, is very uh, recognizable. It's only uh, four strokes, and it really stands out. Uh, the kanji for gold, it has more strokes, but it has that big uh, hat on top, and so that makes it stand out. There's no other piece uh, in the set that has a kanji with a, with a big uh, hat that goes across uh, the entire uh, width of the character. So that's one way you can cue in and recognize that piece. Okay, so let's uh, talk about how the gold general moves. Um, it moves like the king. It moves one square at a time but it has uh, two defects, so it's slightly weaker than the king. And uh, its two defects are the squares that are diagonally behind it. So one way to think about the gold general is uh, it's, it's a, a king that has two blind spots, and the two blind spots are these squares that are diagonally behind it. So if you wanted to, uh, to take that piece, that, uh, either one of those, it would actually take two moves. You would have to, say, move your your uh, gold to the side, and then you could move it back and take the piece that way. Or you could do it in the other order. You could move it backwards and then move it to either side to take the piece. So I will give you another way to think about the moves of the gold general too, just to have uh, another way to think about it. Maybe it'll make it easier for you. You can choose whichever method you like to help remember the moves. But uh, I kind of like this one. Uh, I use it a lot myself. Uh, think of the gold general as a rook that only moves one piece at a one square at a time. So that would give it these four moves: straight ahead, straight back, straight to the left, uh, straight to the right, and straight to the left. Um, and then, in addition, it also can attack any of the squares in front of it, the three squares directly in front. So uh, that gives it a total of six moves: these one, two, three, plus side to side. That's four, five, and directly back is six. And um, while I'm talking about those moves, you may remember this from the previous video. I didn't emphasize this point, but I did describe the moves of a promoted pawn. And uh, if you remember what I said in that video, I said the pawn can go forward to any of the three squares in front, it can go side to side, or it can go directly back. So a promoted pawn is in fact a gold general. It has the powers of a gold general. So that is that is the piece that uh, the pawn is promoted to. I just didn't want to use the name 
uh, in the previous video, so I just described the moves, but uh, that's the piece we're talking about when a pawn is promoted. Um, okay, so that's how to recognize it, how it moves. Let's, um, before we do examples, let's bring in uh, his neighbor, the uh, silver general. So the silver generals sit next to the gold generals, and they are just slightly weaker. So we've gone from uh, the king to the gold general to the silver general, and each piece gets a little bit weaker each time. Now let's take a look at the uh, silver general. So the silver general, if we compare the kanji on it to the gold general, we can see the character on bottom is the same. So that's, uh, that's the word for general, the kanji for general. And then the kanji on top is the kanji for silver. So notice, uh, compare this to the uh, kanji for gold. You'll actually see that it has a segment on the left side of the top character there which is identical to the gold kanji. It's just squished a little bit. And uh, that's common practice in constructing kanji. You can use an existing kanji to build a new one. And uh, this is called a radical. It's uh, just a part of that kanji. This is still just considered one character, and it means silver. But you can also see that it's related to gold. Gold and silver, obviously, have a lot in common, being both uh, precious metals. So in terms of uh, recognizing this visually, uh, still I think you can key off of that uh, hat that sits on top of that, uh, the gold radical within the silver kanji. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty unique. There's actually uh, another piece that, that has a similar uh, appearance and uh, we'll, we'll talk about how to distinguish it. But for now, uh, if you want to distinguish the gold general from the silver general, the silver general has the uh, hat over the left side uh, of the uh, character rather than being over the entire character. So uh, in Japanese, this is uh, Ginsho, meaning Silver General. And uh, well, if you're a fan of the uh, anime Bleach, if you ever watched uh, Bleach, there was a character in that anime called Gin, and that's what his name meant. It meant silver. That's probably how he wrote it. Um, anyway, so we have Kinsho, Ginsho, and uh, we can put the king up there again, Osho, Osho, uh, Kinsho, and Ginsho. Um, the, go the, uh, the king general, the gold general, and the silver general. Okay, so let's talk about their moves. Um, so we know the king and the gold. Silver also just moves one square at a time. And if you remember, uh, I was saying you can think of the gold like a rook that only has uh, uh, one move, uh, that can only move one square at a time. You can think of the silver as a bishop that only moves one square at a time. So it still has the same three moves in front. It can always go, uh, the, the generals can always go to the three squares directly in front of them. But then its other two squares that it can go to are diagonally backwards uh, in either direction. So if you think about that, that looks like a bishop uh, going on all the diagonals, plus it has this one extra square going straight ahead, which it gets by uh, that power of being able to go to any of the three, three squares directly in front. Or if you want to uh, think about it in the other way, if you want to think about the defects, the weaknesses that it has, it has three weaknesses, which are the, the squares that the rook could go to, uh, the square directly to either side, and the square behind. So the, the uh, silver general is a bit uh, clumsier than the gold general in the same way that a, a bishop is sometimes a bit clumsier than a rook. So for example, to get to the square on either side, um, the bishop can get there in, in two moves. It has to go diagonally backwards, and then it can go forward and take that piece. So it can get there, or to the other side, it can go diagonally to this side, and then it can go straight forward to get to that square. But if it wanted to get to the square uh, directly behind it, it actually takes a couple of moves. Here, let's take a few pieces off. And um, so the silver could go diagonally back to this square, could go diagonally back to this square, and then finally it could step forward and uh, take that pawn. So it actually takes three moves to get to the square uh, directly behind it. Okay, so that's how the, um, the silver 
and gold generals move. Now I want to talk about uh, promotion because uh, the silver general is a piece that can get promoted just the way um, that pawns can get promoted. But the gold general is not a piece that can get promoted. So let's uh, introduce one term here. Um, the pieces along the back rank are called minor pieces. There's two more pieces here that I'll be talking about in the next video. And the pawns and the minor pieces can all promote, but the piece they promote to is the gold general. So the gold general itself does not promote. It's, it is uh, sort of the apex of all the minor pieces and pawns. It's the highest uh, piece that they can aspire to. But the silver general uh, can promote, and when it promotes, it promotes, like all of the minor pieces, it promotes to a gold general. And you can uh, tell that from the kanji on the back. You can see it's got that big hat that covers the entire kanji. It's actually a slightly simplified version of this kanji. It doesn't have quite as many characters as the, the standard kanji for gold, but that's all it is. It's just a simplified kanji for gold. It's a kind of a script. Uh, you can write kanji uh, in an abbreviated format, I guess, in some cases. So it's known as a script form of the character. Okay, so uh, let's see. That's how it moves. That's how it promotes. And um, when we were talking about dropping pieces in the previous video, when you have a, a piece like a silver, it really can drop on any open square on the board. I can put it here, for example, where I could not put a pawn because on these squares it has the ability to go diagonally backwards or go side to side so it doesn't get stuck on the back row. There's no, no square on the board where it will get stuck. So in fact, uh, it is legal to drop the, uh, the, the silver general and also the gold general uh, when you have them in hand. You can drop them on any square on the board, including uh, directly in front of the uh, enemy king. <laughs> so uh, that, that can be very handy. And you can see why uh, it is, uh, it's uh, quite a dangerous thing to have your king exposed. So a lot of times uh, in the course of the game, the king will wander over to one side of the board or the other and, and kind of surround himself with a few generals to protect uh, the neighboring squares so that uh, if a piece does get dropped in, it can be uh, taken off or pieces can be used to shield the king. Okay, uh, so let's set up a couple of uh, mating problems here. Let's, uh, let's clear off the board. Oh, look, we can just push these pawns forward. Let's say the king has come over to this side and um, and he's got some pieces around for protection. This is pretty common. He might have, say, a silver a silver general here to guard some squares and uh, a gold general here. Um, and then there there may be some pieces behind it. Um, but uh, we'll ignore those for the moment. And um, and let's say uh, you know a couple of pawns have been moved forward here. And a couple of pieces have been captured. So maybe I have a piece in hand, like a gold general. It's always handy to have one of those. Maybe one of my pawns has been uh, pushed all the way forward and promoted. And uh, let's see, uh, maybe he's captured a couple of my pieces. And I'm going to uh, leave my king alone for the moment. So it's exposed, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's my turn here in this example that I've set up. And uh, so there's actually a mate in one on the board here. If you want to uh, think about this position for a while, see if you can spot a mate in one. Okay, I'm going to uh, give the answer away now. It's, um, well, first of all, this, this is a key piece, the, the gold, the promoted pawn, which is a gold general, but it can't mate by itself. If you move it towards the king, the king can just take it. That's not a problem. But, um, but it is doing an important role, which is, it does have an important role, which is it's looking on this square next to the king. And uh, if you remember the weak spots of the gold general and the silver general, the gold general's weak spot is diagonally backwards and the silver general's weak spot is directly backwards. So there's actually nobody defending that square except for the king. And that means you can drop a gold general right on that square and that king is checkmated. 
So that's that's a uh, maiden one problem for you. And the king, just to, to be clear, it can't take this piece because it's protected. It can't go here or here because those pieces are still under attack by the gold. The gold attacks all three squares in front. And it can't run away in this direction uh, because its own pieces are blocking it. Okay, um, and now maybe I can set up an example that I promised uh, <laughs> from uh, the last game. I, I said it was not legal to drop a pawn in a way that would checkmate your opponent's king, but I couldn't set up a good example. Uh, but now I can. Say um, the king has a couple of pieces blocking its... Uh, let's see, it needs to have a couple of pieces next to it to block its uh, escape routes. Uh, or I suppose I could do it this way too. I could have a promoted pawn over here that is guarding these squares so the king can't go there. And I've got a... Uh, uh, maybe if I put a uh, silver general here... Oh, not, that, that would attack the king. Never mind. A silver general here would not attack the king. So if a silver general here protected by the... Uh, protected by the gold. And so the king at the moment doesn't have any moves. Can't go here or here because of this gold. It can't go here or here because of this gold. And it can't go here because of the silver. The silver has that, um, that uh, square that it controls diagonally backwards. So at this point, if it were legal, you could drop a pawn there and checkmate the king. But there's a special rule against that. So this is checkmate because the, uh, the silver there is protecting the pawn. And as I explained, the, the two golds are guarding all of the escape squares and, uh, and the pawn is protected and it's attacking the king. So that is not legal. However, if your pawn were here and it were your turn to move, you could step it forward like that and checkmate the king that way. So that is a legal checkmate. But uh, you can't drop a piece. You cannot drop a pawn there uh, to checkmate the king. Okay, I think that uh, is it for this video. Let's um, go back. Let's set things up again. So we have the king, we have the two golds next to it, and we have the two silvers next to it. So let's look at all the characters we've learned so far. We have the kings. And... Uh, just uh, for review, there actually are two varieties of kings. This one is the king general, and this one is the jewel general. Uh, but they have the same moves and the same powers. We have the pawns, which have uh, one move straight ahead, and they promote to a gold, and that's what the promoted pawn looks like. And then in this video, we've introduced the generals. So we have the gold general, and uh, the back side of the gold general is blank. It's just a, a reminder that it only promotes two... It doesn't promote. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, the gold general is sort of the, the height of, uh, of, uh, that, uh, that the minor pieces can aspire to, and it's already there, so it's, it's achieved uh, perfection within its realm. Uh, and then we have the silver general, and on the back side of the silver general we can see let me put it over here. We can see that that promotes to a gold. So let's uh, just take a look at these characters here. And uh, try and uh, remember them. And I will see you next time. Bye.